Okay, so first one over here, it says you have circle Q, it has a radius R in units. The measure of A, Q, B is X degrees as shown. So this would be R, the radius. Create an expression using R and X that can be used to find the length of A, arc A, B. Um, something to note here that might not seem like an important piece, but it says expression. An expression has no equal sign. An equation would have an equal sign. Just FYI. <laughs> okay, so we need to find the length of this arc. Um, all the way around here, the circumference would be pi times diameter. It says to write this e expression in terms of r. So circumference would be 2 pi r, like that. To find the length of just this part, you would set up a fraction, x degrees over 360. So that would be the fraction of the circle times the radius. And that's your answer to the first part. That is an expression using r and x that can be used to find the length of a, b. So in this box, you would put in x over 360 times 2 pi r. Then for B, it says create an expression that can be used to find the length of AB in units if circle Q was dilated by a scale factor of 3.7. If something is dilated by that scale factor, the dimensions of that shape would change by a factor of 3.7. So technically you can multiply the radius by 3.7, but it's all multiplication. So just 3.7 times x over 360 times 2 pi r would give you the length after a dilation of 3.7. And again, expression doesn't have an equal sign, so you wouldn't put it equal to anything. That's just, that's it. Okay, um, this one, let's try this one again. <laughs> after that last one where we, I don't know, where totally it went poorly the last time. But okay. So here's the scenario again. This is a palm tree. The larger cylinder is a palm tree. And then it has a tube of the palm tree that takes the water from the bottom of the trunk to the top of the tree. It wants to know how many of these tubes could fit into the trunk of the tree. So we are going to take the base area of the palm tree. So area of the base palm tree and divide it by the area of base of the tube. And then that'll tell us how many times a tube would fit within that palm tree. And so we're dealing with circles or cylinders. So area of a circle is pi r squared. And that's gonna be over the area of the base of the tube. Again, pi r squared. Okay, in the problem, it says the tube is 0 0.00 Zero, 0.03 wide. So the diameter of this tube is 0 0.0003 meters. And the diameter of the trunk is 0.5 meters. So the radius would be half of that. So when we're setting that up, the palm tree 0.25 meters squared over pi Half of 0 0.0003 would be 0 0.00015 squared. And then you would divide this all out. So pi divided by pi is just going to cancel. That's just 1. This squared would be 0 0.625. This squared comes out to 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's seven zeros here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2, 2. That's a cool number. And then divide that out, and it tells you how many of these little tubes fit in the trunk of the tree trunk. And that comes out to this number. So 2,777,778 of the little tubes could fit in the tree trunk. Okay, part B. The tubes in the palm tree are between 20 to 21 meters long. What is the approximate volume in cubic meters of one tube? 
Well, the tube is a cylinder. Volume is asking for is area of the base of the cylinder times the height. The area of the base, we just, well, we didn't quite solve it out over here. So pi r squared for area of the base times the height it says 20 to 21. We'll just use 20 because it's an easy number to work with. And then radius. 0.00015 squared times 20. You plug all this into a calculator and it comes out to, it's five zeros here. One, two, three, four, five. One, four, one, three. Well, that was fun. Okay, the next one, we have to find the perimeter of the shape. Perimeter is the distance around the shape. Anything that is horizontal or vertical, you can just count the units. So one, two, three, four units here. One, two, three, four units here. Um, then for the diagonals, I would recommend using Pythagorean theorem to find that length. So you could just sketch out like a right triangle. And this right triangle is two by three. And then you can use Pythagorean theorem to find that diagonal. So 2 squared plus 3 squared equals c squared. OK. Then I'm going to do that for all the other diagonals. Um, but I'm always looking for shortcuts. So when I sketch out this right triangle, it has the same dimensions, two by three. So that means the this is also going to be square root of 13. I don't need to solve that out again. It's going to solve to the same thing. And then over here to find this length, this right triangle, one by one, two, three, four, five units. So. 1 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared. And I get square root of 26. Then from here, now I have the length of all the sides. I can add them up to find the perimeter. So 4 plus square root of 13 plus square root of 13 plus 4 plus square root of 26. That's fun. Try to round as little as possible. And when you add all this up, it comes out to 20.31. So you'd type that into the box. Next one I find pretty simple. It says, one diagonal of a square EFGH is shown. So square EFGH, so like this, a square. And remember, the points of the square have to be in that order. So EFGH. Complete the sentence to describe square EFGH for each box. Fill in the bubble before the coordinate or phrase that is correct. The location of point F could be. OK, so point. F would be in between E and G up here. So just guessing, guesstimating where it would be. Like to make a square, it'd probably have to be like around right here. So you could like all the sides would be the same measure ish. So looking at these points, I'm looking for a point that lands about there. So negative three, four, that's over here. That's not going to work. Uh, negative one, six. Hey, that looks almost exactly where I drew mine. Cool, that's probably that one. Then one, negative eight, way down here. That's not the answer. So the answer here is B. You just click it, bubble it in. Oh, I didn't realize it wasn't in the screen. Y'all can let me know. I was, yeah. Okay. Okay, and then from here, it says, why is that answer correct? Um, it says have the same slope. Well, mm. and it's talking about diagonals. So if you were to draw a diagonal here, what would happen? Okay, diagonals of a square wouldn't have the same slope. They're 
actually perpendicular, so they wouldn't have the same slope, bisect each other, maybe and probably, but that's not what we would be proving here, are perpendicular. We could prove that this is perpendicular to this, like that, so this is the answer. The diagonals would be perpendicular. Okay, next. Okay, here is a construction one, an example of how they might ask it on the test. This one says Ruby carries out a construction using triangle ABC. Click the play button to see the part of this construction. So there is a little play button down here. So we're gonna pretend to click it. And when we click it, it's gonna show a compass like going right here and then making a cross like this. Okay, so what are they doing here? Well then you would connect this and it would be making an angle bisector for angle B. Ruben constructs a segment, so what will the result be? Segment perpendicular to AC, maybe, but that's not exactly what we're doing. Constructs the bisector of segment AC. Again, maybe, but we were doing an angle bisector. Angle congruent to angle B. No, we're splitting angle B in half. Constructs the bisector of angle B. Oh, there it is. So, D. Okay, leaning tower of Pisa, we've seen this question before. Um, but just like in sports, you wouldn't just practice a play or a specific type of kick one time. You'd practice it over and over to get good at it. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to practice it again just to get even more familiar and good at solving this problem. It says that the engineers restored this building, so the angle changed from 5.5 to 3.99 degrees. Um, to the nearest hundredth, how much did the restoration change the height of the leaning tower of Pisa? Okay, so we're going to draw two right triangles. For both of these, the side of the building is 56.84. And then the angle changed from 5.5 degrees to 3.99 degrees. And we're trying to figure out the change in height. So the height right here is shown. So this would be x and x. I didn't use h for height because that could be confused with SOKOTOA. So that's why I didn't use h. SOKOTOA. We're going to use trig to solve. From this angle, we have the hypotenuse and adjacent side. So we would use k, cosine. Cosine of 5.5 is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then for this one, cosine of 3.99 is adjacent over hypotenuse. To solve it at this point, you're trying to get x by itself, so you'd multiply both sides by 56.84. And this solves to 56.70223. And this one, I don't need to show every little thing. You would plug it in the calculator and you get this. Okay, then you subtract them to see how the height has changed. It comes out to 0 0.1239. This says to round to the nearest hundredth, so that would be 0.12. And that's it. Okay, so at this point, you can grab a laptop, 